Hello, everyone. How nice it is to continue this learning journey with you. Hope you all feel that you have mastered adding fractions. Today, we will be learning how to subtract fractions. But before we continue with our learning journey, let us try to refresh our memory with an activity we started with last time. Remember when you drew or imitated an emotion? Well, today we will do an activity that helps us identify why we feel certain ways. The reason it is important to know how you feel a certain way when you feel it is because it can really affect your learning. For example, if I feel sad or scared, it might be difficult for me to learn. If I feel happy or safe or comfortable, I enjoy learning and I learn well. So, first, go ahead and get a paper and pencil. Next, find yourself a cozy space and get yourself comfortable. Close your eyes and take a deep breath. Now, open your eyes and write down one feeling on your paper, such as happy, worried, sad, mad, scared, excited, or any other feeling you want. Now, think of something that has made you feel that way. For example, if you write down happy, think of something that made you feel happy and draw it. You can do this every day and keep it as your journal of emotions. Okay, are we ready to start with today's lesson? Subtracting fractions? Let's go! Here is a pizza. Every time we see a pizza, we can think of doing fraction activities. So you can eat your pizza and do math. Remember when we started our addition fractions with a pizza? Well, today we will use the pizza again, but this time to learn about subtracting fractions. Here is an example. When I returned back from school, mom had prepared a pizza and she told me that she had cut it into five equal pieces. My brother had already eaten two pieces, so three-fifths of the pizza was left. I also ate but only one piece from the whole pizza. So, what fraction did I eat from the whole pizza? Right, one-fifth. So, first the pizza was cut into five equal pieces. My brother ate two-fifths and I ate one-fifth. What fraction of the whole pizza was left? Look at the pizza. How many pieces were left? Good, two pieces. So, what do you conclude? When one-fifth is taken away from three-fifth, we get two-fifth. So, to subtract one-fifth from three-fifth, we get two-fifth. Another pizza was prepared by mom. She cut it into eight equal pieces. Mom ate one piece. What fraction of the whole pizza was left? Very good. Seven-eighths of the pizza was left. Dad ate two pieces. What fraction is this from the whole pizza? Right, two eighths. Then, what fraction of the whole pizza was left? 
Look at the pizza. How many pieces were left? Good. Five pieces. So, what do you conclude? Two eighths taken away from seven eighths, we get five eighths. So, to subtract two eighths from seven eighths, we get five eighths. So, seven eighths minus two eighths equals five eighths. Now, let's subtract fractions using this model. Can you tell me the fraction of the shaded parts in the model? It is 7 8. Very good. And now, what is the fraction of the shaded parts with red crosses of the whole model? 6 8. Now, let us subtract these two fractions. 7 8 minus 6 8 equals 1 8. Well done! So, using models can help us subtract fractions. Now, it is your turn to solve the following example. First, count the total number of equal parts so that you know what the denominator is. It is a total of four equal parts. Okay, now what is the fraction of the shaded parts? Three fourth. Great. How about taking two fourth? That is the shaded parts with red X's. Two fourth, that is correct. Now let us subtract these two fractions. Three fourths minus two fourths equals one fourth. That's great. You did it! Now you know how to subtract fractions of a whole with the same denominator. How about practicing subtracting fractions of a whole using more models? Can you tell me how you will do it alone? In the first model, the circle, first Count the total number of equal parts so you know what the denominator is. There are eight equal parts. Now you have six eighths of the circle shaded, and to take three eighths means shading with X's. Now subtract the two. What do you get? Three eighths. So, 6 eighths minus 3 eighths is equal to 3 eighths. Now, what about the second model? First, count the total number of equal parts. There are 9 equal parts. That's right. How many parts are shaded green? 7 parts are shaded. And what fraction is this? 7 ninths. And what fraction is shaded with X's? 5 ninths. Let us subtract these two fractions to see what we get. 7 ninths minus 5 ninths equals 2 ninths. Okay. Are we ready for some more? Now, Let's see what we can conclude. 6 eighths minus 3 eighths is 3 eighths. And 7 ninths minus 5 ninths is 2 ninths. What about 3 fourths minus 2 fourths? It is 1 fourth. And the last example. 7 eighths minus 6 eighths equals 1 eighth. Now, 
look at the fractions. Look at the numerators and the denominators. What do you notice? Take a deep breath, a moment to think, and then tell me what you notice. That's it, my smart mathematicians. Only the numerator changes. The denominator doesn't. And do you know why? Just like when we added fractions, the numerator shows us the parts we take while the denominator shows us the total number of equal parts or total number of items. So, to subtract two fractions that have the same denominator, we just subtract the numerators. Good conclusion! So, we look at the denominator. If it is the same, then we subtract the numerators and put that over the denominator. Now, just as we have used the number line to add fractions, we can also use it to subtract fractions. Look at the number line. The one whole is divided into eight equal parts. So each part is one eighth. Right. Now, how do we use the number line to subtract six eighths minus four eighths? Go to the six eighths, then jump four jumps backwards. Where are you now? Good, at two eighths. Now, what do you conclude? Six eighths minus four eighths equals two eighths. Now, let's do another example using a number line. The one whole is divided into six equal parts. So each part is one sixth, right? Now it is your turn to use the number line to subtract five sixths minus two sixths. How do you do it? On the number line, first go to five sixths. Then you jump two jumps backwards. Where did you land? That's it, at three sixths. Now, what do you conclude? Very good. Five sixths minus two sixths equals three sixths. Now, look at these sweet candies. What fraction of the candies are red? Good. Three seventh of the candies are red. So why don't you take one red candy? What fraction of the whole candies is this? Very good, one seventh. Now, what fraction of the red candies is left? You found it, two sevenths. Now, let's write the equation that represents this. Very good. 3 seventh minus 1 seventh equals 2 sevenths. As we said earlier, we can find fractions with all sorts of models, whether they are shapes or groups of items. Look at these lovely toy cars. We have three yellow cars and two blue cars, a total of five cars. So your denominator is five. Now, what fraction of the toy cars are yellow? That's it, three fifths of the toy cars are yellow. Now, take two toy cars. What fraction of all the toy cars did you take? Good, two fifths of the toy cars. Now, what fraction of the yellow toy cars are left? You did it, one fifth. 
Let's write the equation that represents this. Very good. 3 fifths minus 2 fifths equals 1 fifth. So, as you see, you can also subtract fractions of a group. Now, let's practice subtracting some more fractions. Do you remember how we subtract fractions? We look at the denominator. If it is the same, we just subtract the numerators. Then, write the difference over the denominator. Now, it is your turn to subtract. 5 sixths minus 2 sixths. Very good. It is 3 sixths. Now, do the second one. 4 fourths minus 2 sevenths. You did it! 3 sevenths. What is the difference between 3 fifths and 1 fifth? 2 fifths. Great thinking! Now, let's try some more examples. Solve and then choose the correct answer from this group of given fractions. Ready? Let's start. 7 eighths minus 2 eighths. That's it. 5 eighths. 5 sixths minus 2 sixths. So smart. 3 sixths. 3 sixths minus 1 sixth. You did it! 2 sixths. 4 eighths minus 3 eighths. 1 eighth. You now know how to subtract fractions. So smart, my mathematicians. Now, let's see if you can solve this. A student walks when he goes back home after school. If he has walked, three tenths of the distance, what fraction of the distance is left to reach home? How do you think to solve this? The whole distance is one whole. So think about this as if you are using a number line. You have started at zero, reached three tenths, so how many more do you need to reach the one whole? Think about it and count the remaining parts out of 10. Great! 7 tenths of the distance is left. Now, how can we write this as a subtraction sentence? Good! 1 whole is 10 tenths. So, 10 tenths minus 3 tenths equals 7 tenths. It has been wonderful being with you as we learn how to subtract fractions. I have a little fun activity for you to do with family and friends. Your task is to find the mystery fractions. This will be fun to do. Keep in mind that you have all the skills you need to solve these mystery fractions. First mystery fraction is as follows. You have two identical fractions that have a sum of two sevenths. What are the two fractions? The second mystery fraction to solve is The sum of two fractions is seven eighths. Their difference is one eighth. What are the two fractions? I am sure now that you know how to subtract fractions. And you can follow these links for further understanding and practicing adding and subtracting fractions as well. Enjoy your time! Waiting to meet you again! Thanks a lot!